catch you, Lorraine. Thanks. Thanks for joining us again on another uh, Friday here in lockdown Melbourne. It's just gone 12. So I think we'll uh, get started. I can see uh, quite a few people jumping on here. Welcome. Uh, if you are joining us on a live webinar, this is live and we're also live on Facebook. So welcome to those uh, that follow us on Freestyle Feats Facebook page or on Instagram. And also welcome uh, to those on the Ball and Sports Physio Facebook page. Uh, we'll We'll get started and I've got some great slides for you today and hopefully some really um, interesting information for you. Perhaps you've tuned in because uh, you have um, some unstable ankles maybe. Uh, maybe you've rolled your ankle just recently, uh, but potentially you've been rolling your ankles for some time and hopefully we'll be able to sort that out for you today and give you some tips on what to do about them. So this is our last Fix It Friday. It's been really fun coming to you live each Friday uh, at lunchtime. And I know a lot of people uh, who can't tune in live on the, on the 12 o'clock schedule, then have a look on Facebook later on that day. And uh, if that's you and uh, you'd like this presentation sent to you or anything like that, don't forget to email us. Uh, you can email us at uh, info at freestylefeet.com.au. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so uh, as always, we've got to cover off in this slide. My name is Andrew Wine. I am an APA titled sport and exercise physiotherapist. What that means is I'm really interested in sports injuries. And uh, over the last 19, nearly 20 years, I've been uh, had a special interest in foot and ankle uh, conditions and ankle sprains in particular chronic ankle instability which I'll tell you what that is in a minute uh, is really one of my passions and it's part of our mission here at Freestyle Feet uh, to change the way people look after their feet and their ankles and get more out of them. So today's coming to you from Freestyle Feet but I'm actually inside a clinic and it's Ball and Sports Physio. Uh, so that's a, a clinic in the eastern suburbs for those of you that I can see are not in Melbourne and uh, we are a team of physios and uh, podiatrists. I might even have Darcy join us later on if his consulting runs on time. He's a podiatrist again with a special interest in obviously foot and ankle but ankle sprains. Uh, this a quick medical display disclaimer, this is not specific medical advice. And of course, this is generic in nature. So if you do have an issue that you're concerned about, please make sure you check in with your own personal physio, doctor, osteo, chiro, whoever it may be, and just take that uh, under consideration. Okay, so we're going to cover uh, what is an ankle sprain, I think. Most people know what an ankle sprain is, but we'll just go briefly into the anatomy as to what happens. We are also going to then teach you today about the difference between an acute ankle sprain and what we call a chronic ankle uh, instability or CAI for short. We're going to show you what happens in it, both those things. We're going to tell you what to do about them if you have, hopefully not, but if you've sprained your ankle recently. And uh, in particular, we'll give you some tips on um, weak ankles, wobbly ankles, unstable ankles. And um, perhaps you don't trust, you don't fully trust your ankles. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, we'll summarize at the end. And as always, if you stick with us, um, I've got a little special offer for you at the end. Okay, so what is a sprained ankle? What is an ankle sprain? Well, uh, this slide here shows you what happens. Uh, the foot turns in. So that's called a, an inversion uh, injury. And the ligaments on the outside of your ankle typically get stretched and sometimes they can even tear. So the ligaments are little uh, parts of the capsule. They're like little ropes is the best way to think about them. And they keep the joint stable. So we have ligaments in our whole body or in, anywhere there's a joint generally has ligaments to stabilize it and keep the joint working in the plane of movement, moving in the direction it should be. So the typical and most common is an inversion ankle sprain. We can see there in the mid middle there, that's a normal ankle. And then an eversion sprain is possible. They're quite rare, but they can happen. And that's where you go the other way. So the foot is turned outwards. And then what you'll do then is you will then um, sprain the inside ankle. 
uh, which is a bit of an issue. So if I use my highlighter, um, this is even worse. So this is a little more serious. These take longer. You'll sprain the medial ligament, the inside ligament, if your foot gets caught on something or twists out the other way. Typically though, we always uh, tend to talk about ankle sprains and assume that is it a lateral ankle sprain. And that's certainly the most common one. Good, so we'll mainly focus on, if I can get my slides to move, we'll mainly focus on inversion sprains today. The other ones are really complex and they do take a, a long time to talk about and a slightly different kettle of fish. We need to go slower. The principles remain the same if you did happen to do an eversion sprain, but we're gonna mostly talk about an inversion sprain. Just before I move on, we're also not going to talk about high ankle sprains. A high ankle sprain is something that happens, um, unsurprisingly like the name suggests, happens up high. And uh, what happens in a high ankle sprain is that you tear the ligaments, and I'll just uh, use my pointer again, you tear the ligaments up here between the two bones. This is your tibia, here is your fibula, and you tear the ligaments between them. That's a whole different scenario yet again, um, even uh, more serious. And we typically uh, need to talk about that for some time on its own. So that's a high ankle sprain. So we're talking about a garden variety, general low ankle sprain. And with the mechanism of injury, that's what the language we use, the mechanism of injury would be inversion where the foot is turned in and you've sort of rolled out. So that's the classic one there. All right, let's move on and we'll show you well, what is an ankle sprain. I'm going to show you one here. So there's lots of footage of ankle sprains and I want you to watch this little clip and see if you can see where it happens. We will go through a few times, get ready for it, watch closely. Oops, right there. Okay, so we might just watch that again. And there he goes, he, he just, just there, boom. Okay, we might watch it one last time. Hopefully you can all see that. So here we go, he's about to do it. He's a, so he hasn't done it yet. He's, it's gonna be on his left foot here. Just watch out, get ready for it. Right there, there you go. So that's an inversion injury. The weight has gone forwards and, and over the top of the outside of the ankle and the ankle is um, sprained um, and turned inwards. All right. So that's what they look like in real life. They are really, really common. And they, it's the most common sporting injury uh, in, in all of the, the world sport. So really, really, really common. And of course you can do this just walking down the road as well. Here's the anatomy. I won't bore you with too much of it because it does get quite complex. Here are all the ligaments, the lateral ligaments. So on the outside of your ankle, uh, where's my foot? Okay, so um, here's a foot front on. We're looking at the outside of the ankle here. And I've highlighted in green here, the most commonly sprained part of the lateral ligament. This, uh, without going into too much fine detail, the anterior talofibular part of the lateral ligament complex, so the ATFL, and there's multiple parts of this. There's different, different uh, little bands down here, uh, different part of the ligaments. You can see all sorts of different ligaments on the outside of your ankle. And when you roll your foot in and you roll your ankle, you go over the top of it, then you can damage essentially any of those. And the more of those you damage, uh, the tend to be worse it is and the longer it takes to recover, but you will recover. So that's the anatomy. All right, now why is this a, a bit of an issue? Well, um, as you've just heard, this is a really prevalent injury. So we know from a really good study in 2016 that looked at how many ankle sprains in the UK occur. Uh, so just taking the UK population, there's 5,600 ankle sprains a day in the UK. Now, if we extrapolate that uh, population data out to Australia, no one's actually done this, but we're guesstimating that there's 2,000 ankle sprains each day in Australia. Now, the issue is, um, well, while I've got a thumbs down there, is that 40% of these go on to chronic ankle instability, or CAI. And you'll know by the end of this in about 15 minutes from now, why that is a major issue. And we really need to make sure that we do something about this as a nation, as a uh, global community to make sure that they don't go on to having weak, unstable ankles. All right. 
Um, and look at this statistic. Uh, this is a real statistic. It's actually 55%. 55% of first time ankle sprain people do not seek medical input. Now, why is that a concern? Well, uh, sometimes you can walk them off and it heals up and it won't be an issue, but roughly 40% go on to cause ongoing issues. And you'll see that um, that is something we definitely don't want to have happen. All right, so what's the difference between an acute ankle sprain and chronic ankle instability? Well, an acute ankle sprain is a one-off sprain. So that's the one where it's the, potentially your first time sprain and you uh, typically roll your foot inwards like we talked about, an inversion injury, and that would be an acute sprain. Chronic ankle instability, I'll just go back for a second. Chronic ankle instability, I'll give you the definition even in just two slides time, is where you've had multiple sprains over a significant length of time. So your first sprain had to have been 12 months ago and then you've had at least two sprains. So if you've had at least one sprain more than 12 months and you've had at least two sprains, you might fit into the category of that chronic ankle instability. All right, so let's just quickly go over this slide. Acute ankle sprain management. Most people know how to look after a sprained ankle because it is so common. And typically we used to talk about rice, rest, ice, compression, elevation. You might remember that from your first aid training some time ago. Well, guess what? We're not talking about rice anymore. So no longer is it rice, it's now peace. And uh, peace and love. Um, so I'm not sure if the uh, Hare Krishna community uh, the, or, or the Buddhist community came up with uh, peace and love, uh, but uh, those are great little acronyms to go through it. So what you wanna do is you wanna protect the ankle from further injury, that's the P. You definitely wanna still elevate, so we've kept that one in there. We now know that we want to avoid anti-inflammatories. And this is a, a great little tip that hopefully you can take away. So Nurofen, uh, ibuprofen is the drug name, uh, should be avoided where possible. And stronger ones like Voltaren, slightly different, um, Meloxicam, uh, Salabrex, some of these other anti-inflammatories, they're called non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. We now know they should be avoided when you sprain your ankle. And a lot of people quickly pop a few Nurofen. Um, reason they want to be avoided, now we know that, is that it tends to increase the bleeding. So if you have torn the ligaments, uh, they, will, they will bleed, that they will swell. That's the bruising that often comes out uh, a few days later sometimes and it puffs up. And we don't want to necessarily increase that amount of bleeding. And the other thing that they do is they inhibit collagen formation. The collagen formation is scar tissue. And we actually want it to scar up. So we want this to, to lay down. The body will naturally try and heal it. It will lay down some scar tissue. And where that ligament has been pulled apart, stretched or potentially torn, uh, then you need to lay down some scar tissue and, and really glue that back up again. So anti-inflammatories tend to inhibit that. That's why we avoid them now. If it's sore, Panadol. Um, compression is important, so an, a compression bandage is still important, um, and we've got uh, we've got elevation in there twice. Um, the that's in, that is very very important. We talk about love in terms of uh, load, so we want to slowly get going on it again if we can. Uh, we want to promote optimism that it's going to be okay, and you'll understand uh, why that's important soon. Uh, we want to encourage vascularization. That's the the healing process. Again, why we um, are now not taking anti-inflammatories, we want to gently start to get it moving as soon as we can. That's assuming you can weight bear on it. So just think about that acute ankle sprain management. The main difference now is we scrap the ice. Um, you can still put ice on it, uh, but uh, we, we now know that it doesn't necessarily change much. It may help the pain, but it doesn't seem to change the um, time to return to activity or sport. And definitely no anti-inflammatories. That's the key takeaway from today. All right, so chronic ankle instability, I've talked a little bit about today. Um, so this is something where your ankles remain weak and perhaps you don't trust them and perhaps they keep rolling. Perhaps they start rolling on even small little things. You're walking along, uh, step on a stick, over you go and you do another little tweak on it. This is an issue because if chronic ankle instability continues unabated, a large percentage of chronic ankle instability ends up with ankle arthritis. 
and ankle arthritis is a big problem later in our lives because we don't have a good operation fix for it. We do have joint replacements for other joints that get arthritis, so hips, knees. Unfortunately, the ankle joint replacements, they do exist. We've tried different models around the world over the years. None of them really last. And so by well, the time you cut out the arthritic joint, put a replacement in, look at it, what activity you can get back to um, over time. They are improving and hopefully technology will continue to allow them to improve. But generally speaking, the operation that fixes an arthritic ankle that's still being mostly done is a fusion. And this somewhat patchy x-ray uh, has got screws straight through the ankle joint through here. Um, this is uh, actually a triple fusion. Uh, so we've got the subtalar joint also fused. That is an ankle that will no longer flex up and down. So if I use my real one, that's not happening anymore. So the long-term effects of rolling your ankle one time, maybe not an issue. Two times ongoing leads to chronic ankle instability. Chronic ankle instability leads to arthritis. Arthritis leads to fusion and you are not running again. You are not fitting into a ski boot again. Um, you're gonna to struggle to ride the horse. You're gonna to struggle to surf. You're gonna to struggle to do a lot of things. So really serious. So uh, we don't think about that when we roll our ankles and just walk it off, but that's uh, hopefully what we wanna prevent um, in educating you today. So the definition of chronic ankle instability is important to understand because it's not just one thing. So it's gotta have these three components, mechanical instability, where literally because the ligaments have torn, this guy moves around a bit more, so he wobbles around. So you've got to have that. You've got to have perceived instability. And this is where you don't quite really trust that ankle. It feels unstable to you. You feel like you might go over on it. I certainly notice patients coming in saying that all the time. And, uh, and it's easy to test for in the clinic. Uh, the, the third component to this is having recurrent sprains. So consistent sprains, at least two, and uh, at, at least two in the last six months is generally um, the definition that we will use. So you've got to have all three of those to have chronic ankle instability. If you have uh, a couple of them, then you're sort of halfway there and you should address that before it gets worse. Patients often tell me it almost feels like, and this might be you, and uh, certainly um, tell me if it is in the, in, in the Q&A or the chat there, um, that they're almost like on an ice skate. So they almost feel like they're balancing on an ice skate and at any time they could just wobble straight off it. And if that's you, then you definitely need to do something about that. So what do we do? Uh, well, um, I'm excited to tell you about this. I'm gonna show you some of these. What we do here at Borwin and uh, Darcy's played a huge role in this, uh, in developing what we think is a world first, that's right, a world first um, chronic ankle instability return to sport or rehab guide. Uh, we are just putting the finishing touches on this. This will be up um, available uh, for download on the Freestyle Feet website soon. We're really proud of this. There's been years of work has gone into this. And uh, what we've done is broken up uh, the rehab into stages where there's goals at each stage. Uh, number one is, is just recovering from the ankle um, injury in the first place, the acute stage. And then we do um, two, three and four. And I won't go into the details uh, of all those things today, uh, but splitting it up into little groups makes it really achievable and workable. And we set goals for each of them. Um, probably the thing we're most proud about is the uh, phase three. Um, so learning to trust and use the ankle again, to change direction, to jump, to land. Um, that's where a lot of the secret um, comes into really getting the most back out of your ankle again. And uh, the outcomes uh, following this are really, really, really positive. So this is the, probably the most important slide for you today. I wanna to show you uh, some things that you can do today, right now, um, with very little equipment, um, if at all, and you can start working your ankle. So there's top two pictures here, and perhaps I'll uh, just uh, annotate here. So we'll just get a, my spotlight up here. So there's top two exercises here. Um, that's a starting position, that's a finished position. This is called ankle eversion. So you need a, an elastic band, the tube that uh, the Thera tube doesn't really work for this. We like the bands. So you wrap the band around the foot 
you use the other one as a little bit of a fulcrum and you turn your foot out. Now what you're working here is your perineal muscles or your ankle everters. These are the muscles that run down the outside of your ankle and they turn your foot out. Why is that important? Well, we know that in ankle sprain uh, clients, these muscles are a little bit traumatized. Sometimes they come back on, sometimes they stay asleep. And they're the ones that save you from falling and spraining again. So we need those muscles to be very quick, very strong. It's very, very important that we get them going again. So that's something uh, quite simply you, you can do. If you don't have one of these TheraBands, every physio clinic in um, Melbourne or Australia will have these. And there's a lot of them lying around, um, easily purchased at Rebel online. Um, they're not expensive. You could use a bike tire um, as a supplement uh, to try to get some, some tension there. So that's the, the most important and, and everybody gets that. Second thing that I'm gonna show you here is, uh, and you know I talk about these products a lot, obviously, these are Freestyle Feet's um, specific products. I've got one here, a silicon massage ball. Really want to tell you about this because there was a paper done from Swedish researchers in 2017. And it showed that massaging underneath the foot, so the muscles underneath the foot, so these muscles are here, uh, and, and this is represented by the, uh, the, the skeleton here. The muscles underneath the feet are very, very, very good at sensing where the ankle is. And massaging underneath them increases their ability to sense where the foot is and hence becomes more stable. So the best part about this is the research they show was a physio doing the massage, a therapist doing the massage, definitely improves static balance. So that's your ability just to stand on one foot greatly improved uh, quite, a, quite a bit. The best part about it was the same outcome was done by a ball. So a simple ball like this uh, will increase your balance. What do you do? You massage underneath your foot two to five minutes and immediately watch what happens. Stand up, your balance will be improved. Um, so what an easy way uh, to improve your ability to avoid rolling your ankle. So just massaging underneath there. Um, you know, this is uh, obviously our favorite product. This is our biggest seller. These are the Flamingo feet. Um, I've obviously mentioned it for those that have been tuning in every Friday. Uh, that improves balance as well. Uh, we're doing our own internal research on this here. You can pretty easily see if the base of support is bigger, then the balance improves. If you go to our YouTube channel, Freestyle Feet's YouTube channel, uh, if you Google that, uh, flamingo feet and balance you'll find a little video that I shot that um, literally I show balance before and I put them on uh, unprompted live and the balance improves and those of you who have been using them I can see some of you uh, on this webinar uh, doing that will know what I'm talking about all right now the uh, little video no it's, sorry it's not a video it's a picture of standing on balance foam so again this is specific a specific product for ankle balance uh, that is a really soft foam and it makes it really unstable. So standing on your dodgy wobbly ankle and just balancing on that foam will do a massive amount in strengthening the muscles and improving your balance reaction. Do I have one of those um, balance foams at home? Uh, well, it doesn't matter if you don't. Um, you can invest in one if you want. They are quite expensive because there is a specific a density but what you can do is roll up a yoga mat. You can use a pillow. I was looking at the bed behind me. Um, a camping mat is really, really good. So you can roll that up as well. Basically, you want a soft, slightly unstable surface. And we used to use wobble boards for these uh, back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, even 90s. Those uh, pieces of wood that wobbled around. You can use that um, if you'd like. Uh, and this is my favorite because it works the foot a little bit more as well as the ankle. So that will be working on your unstable balance. Here's an example of a more dynamic movement in the bottom right hand corner here. And what this um, muscle bound chap is doing is jumping from one spot to another spot to another to another. So we call it four point hopping. We're making him change direction and we're getting him to stick the landing on a certain spot. And this is a really secret takeaway from today. If, you do, if you've built up to this, and again, you need to progress and build up. If you've built up to jumping, landing on, then you trust the ankle enough, you've, you've done your strength work, the balance has improved statically where you're not moving much, you definitely want to do some of these. But what you want to do is put a target down on the ground that you can land on. So what we use 
here in the clinic and if, er, if anyone's been here as a patient or perhaps somewhere else, we'll use a bit of tape and we'll stick that on the floor and we'll use that as our target to land on. I challenge you after this webinar today to stick a bit of tape down on the floor or if you've got tiles or, or something to, you can land on, stand about one foot behind it and jump on one foot and land with the balls of your feet right on that landing spot. See what happens, see if you can stick it. It should be straightforward. If your balance, your timing, your receptors, all these um, big names that essentially is talking about balance, if you can, if they're all working well, you'll land beautifully on that target. Compare to the other side and see if you can do it three times in a row. That's the challenge that we give our clients here and they're stunned when they can't do it and they miss it, they miss the target. It's really easily retrained through a little bit of practice and that is one of our secret tips that'll stop you rolling your ankles. So those are just some examples. They're my favorite, they're my go-tos, they're my every ankle gets these. Of course, there's more. I could, I could absolutely show you oh, um, 20, 30, 40, 50 um, different exercises. And of course, in our guide, we break them down into stage one, two, three, and four and they progressively get harder. And I'd strongly encourage you to start with some simple ones like these up in this corner and gradually progress to some more challenging ones. And don't move on until you've nailed those easy ones and then you'll make sure that you're ticking the boxes and you're progressing forwards. Um, does this work? Absolutely. If you spend some weeks, some months working on this and then you can go into maintenance mode where you just add this onto a daily ritual and the, one of the easiest ways of doing it is when you're brushing your teeth, try and do it standing on one foot with your eyes closed. And if you do that every night, you'll more than likely maintain your ankle balance and it will go some way to preventing further chronic ankle instability. So there you have it. I'm trying to keep this on time and keep it short and sharp and punchy and we're doing pretty uh, well at this stage when we're nearly there. I was just seeing if Darcy was around. He hasn't popped in yet. I'll keep talking for a few more minutes and see if he pops in and we'll ask him how uh, any questions as well. All right, so about 27 past. We'll, um, we'll, we'll keep going here. All right, well, you've stuck with us. I could see most of you are stuck with us to the end. I've lost a few along the way. Um, but uh, for those of you who have, uh, as always, I've put up a little special um, code for you. And um, in working out what I was going to do uh, for uh, those of you that stuck with you today, I, I, I can't with this code. But as I've, um, as I've just read this back out loud, I've realized it's slightly inappropriate. Um, the code is free ball. Um, and uh, no, I wasn't being rude there. Um, literally, uh, what we're going to do, if you go to freestylefeet.com.au, if any of you uh, want flamingo feet, uh, what we're going to do just for you is if you enter in free ball, um, you'll get one of the uh, silicon massage balls thrown in for free. Um, that's uh, our, our little gesture. These are timeless and now you know how to use it for increasing um, your balance immediately. So this is all about balance. Um, there's the code free ball. It's only going to last for the week. Um, so it will run out after that. Feel free to tell anyone that's having some ankle um, issues to get uh, to get onto that. So that's pretty much all the they need. And if they need a program from, from us, feel free to write to us and re-watch this as well. Maybe do some of those exercises as well. So there you have it. Um, that's um, our ankles, that's the last of our Fix It Fridays. So hopefully, whether you've had bunions um, or whether you've had, um, oh, I can see a little, little chat question in there. Um, whether you've had bunions, whether you've had uh, plantar fasciitis, whether you've got flat feet or whether you've got um, unstable ankles, um, then uh, hopefully you've taken away something from, uh, from today um, and the last four weeks as well. Um, so... Um, thanks, Jessica. Um, glad you enjoyed the Fix It Fridays. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, my biggest issue is I could talk about this all day and I'm trying to keep them um, really short, sharp and punchy and useful for you. So um, you're most welcome. If there's anything else you ever want us to cover, uh, we'd be more than happy to do so at a future date. Uh, feel free to email us at info at freestylefeet.com.au or of course you could 
um, for those of you that uh, know us at the clinic, uh, Ball and Sports and Physiotherapy Centre. Um, still waiting for Darcy to see if um, he's going to jump in here from give us a podiatry comment. Um, any questions at all, uh, feel free to pop them in the Q&A or the chat section. While we're doing, um, doing that, feel free to pop them in. I'll just quickly um, jump across and see if we have any questions on uh, Facebook that might be coming through. No, I'm not seeing any, any questions uh, here. No, it doesn't look like it. Uh, no, all right. I can't see any questions that have popped up on Facebook. So that's um, good. Uh, okay, we've got a thumbs up. That's good. Hopefully we've covered something of relevance there for you. Uh, if there's any other uh, questions, I'll stick around uh, online for another couple of minutes. Um, oh, here we go. Here's Darcy. Darcy has just joined us. And there he is. I will... Um, I will make Darcy a co-host. Darcy, can you hear us? Hello, yes, I can. Hey, Darcy, how are you, buddy? Good, good, good. Here he is. Happy Darcy, Friday. So, happy Friday. Yeah, welcome, Darcy. We've um, just been wrapping it up, um, waiting for any questions. Thanks for joining us. For those of you who don't know Darcy, he is a podiatrist to the stars and uh, he's the podiatrist here at Ball and Sports and Physiotherapy Centre. Um, Darcy, we've just finished up talking about Weak ankles, uh, we started off with sort of uh, what is an ankle sprain? I, th I think you, you know all that. And we just finished up with chronic ankle instability. Um, if there's um, any questions that you want to ask myself as a physio or Darcy as a podiatrist, then pop them in. But I, I was going to just ask you, Darcy, thanks for joining us. Yeah, no um, What is your thoughts on orthotics and ankle sprains? Uh, the reason being is I've always been confused is um, if we're rolling our ankles outwards is the most common way we do that. And an orthotic is designed to lift our arch and almost push us outwards. Is that not making it more risky? Could you comment yeah. on that? Yeah, so it's um, it's one of those things that uh, an orthotic is, is not just an orthotic is an orthotic. So there's a thousand different ways that, that somebody could make an orthotic. I uh, appreciate what you're saying where um, a lot of orthotics do have more support at the inside of the, the foot, which uh, can at times, maybe if the orthotic is, is too uh, aggressive, push the foot outwards where uh, we're to the point, uh, the ankle position where we'd normally see those inversion sprains that I'm sure you've been, been talking about. So uh, at times uh, we can actually make orthotics to be protective for uh, ankle sprains, uh, in, which, in which case we actually have support on the outside of the foot uh, to try and prevent that excess, uh, what's called inversion or, or ankle sprain moment, where we can push it back uh, and just prevent and, and block part of that movement if there is a, a really unstable ankle uh, that we know the ligaments might not be uh, in perfect shape or, or if somebody's foot needs, uh, needs that extra support to prevent that rolling out. So uh, it's one of those things that uh, if, if an orthotic, for example, was made for a different condition, one that didn't take into consideration the uh, chronic ankle instability or the ankle sprain, then uh, uh, that orthotic might have features in it which uh, can push that foot out and, and for it to be a problem. But uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that, that they all can. It really depends on what was the orthotic made for, where is the support on that, that orthotic, and is that orthotic appropriate for the, um, the person with the, uh, the ankle instability. So um, yeah, at times I've found that uh, with, the, with the orthotic being made um, specifically for uh, a person with chronic ankle instability uh, or with a big history of sprains, that can actually be uh, somewhat protective of ankle sprains uh, as well and can assist with, with balance at some, uh, in some occasions. But uh, in some occasions, if the orthotic is, is not uh, for that, it may not be helpful. Okay, all right. So what I'm hearing is case by case um, and really important that the clinician understands the whole picture um, and to that end I, th I think it's really important that those of you listening uh, if you are on the opposite you're the patient then make sure you you tell your podiatrist uh, all about all your injuries so you might have gone to them for 
flat feet, for example, but you've also got a history of ankle sprains. So um, is, would that would that be fair to say, Darcy? Yeah, definitely, definitely. It needs to be um, uh, applied specifically to the scenario rather than uh, more of a general approach. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it should should be assessed. I think it's a good thing to get the orthotics assessed uh, uh, just so that the purpose of, of those suits the patient's needs at the time. Okay, understood, yeah. Um, like everything, and particularly I think that's what hopefully we do our best to do well is there's no one size fits all when it comes to um, bodies and, uh, and health uh, of, any, of any setting. Um, and so what would you recommend, Darcy, as the sort of um, frequency of just checking? Because you, as, as you just said, your needs change. So the orthotic needs need to change with it. What's, what's your average recommended um, check-in time? With a podiatrist, I think if the uh, the the problem that we've been dealing with is uh, not too distant in the in the past, maybe every three to six months uh, could be good just to ensure things are moving in the right direction. But if there hasn't been many problems for a while, maybe once every twelve months. Uh, and the other thing with that is that uh, if orthotics were prescribed for a person at one point in time, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have to wear them forever. It's really good uh, a good uh, point for people at home to understand that orthotics aren't necessarily a life sentence they're a tool used for a problem sometimes problems last forever sometimes problems don't last forever so um, I think that's a pretty important point could not agree more Darcy that's um, I couldn't have said that any better myself it's, it's like um, that yeah that's something I say on, on a regular basis uh, to, to patients so yeah um, fantastic point well uh, thank you that's that was it was really good um, great, great insight, um, and not not common knowledge. So, hopefully that um, that gets out. Well, uh, we want to keep it short and punchy. So, if anyone has any final questions, feel free to. I just checked Facebook, uh, and I can't see any there. A uh, few few comments, uh, shares, but no questions. As anyone does have any questions, pop them in the chat box or the Q&A and we'll answer them now. It can be anything um, other than ankles. Well, whilst you've got free access to a physio and a podiatrist, we'll, we'll, um, we've allocated uh, time, so we'll, we'll answer anything you might have. Um, no? All right. Great. Good. All right. Well, um, once again, thank you to everybody for tuning in for our last Fix It Friday. If you do have any requests, we'd be more than happy to accommodate them. Uh, we love talking feet and ankle and uh, anything at all, just info at freestylefeet.com.au or again at the Clinic Ball and Sports and Physiotherapy Centre. Darcy, thanks for joining us. Uh, I know you were in between clients me. today, so no, you're welcome. So thanks for um, making it work. And uh, again, have a great day, everyone. And if you're in Melbourne, hopefully the lockdown eases soon. If you are uh, outside Melbourne, of which I know some of you are, or you're international, then I hope uh, everything's going okay where you are. And look after yourselves, and uh, we'll we'll see you again soon. Thanks, Andrew. See you, Darcy. Bye, everyone. Get